All right, Luke Thomas from Morning Combat here with the man of the hour. He takes on Haseem Rahman Jr. August 6th at the Mecca, Madison Square Garden on Showtime Pay-Per-View. It is the one, the only, Jake Paul. Hi, Jake. I, I watched your presser today. I would love to get your reaction to it, everything that went down. Give me your assessment of what went on today. Man, I lost some brain cells talking to those guys. It was so crazy trying to compute what was going on in their heads. One minute they're saying that weight doesn't matter and that he's a heavyweight. Then the next they're complaining about having to cut weight and just going back and forth, contradicting themselves. I think it's cute that he brought his daddy with him. You know, he needs his hand held. He needs his little binky. It's clear he hasn't been able to leave the nest yet. So the whole thing was just a crazy show. I'm still trying to get the brain cells back after that. Uh, a couple of things that were interesting from the presser. The first one, his father, obviously a decorated boxer, had noted that his own son's preparation had been continuously throughout the course of his career, like underwhelming, I guess is the word. Were you surprised by that? Uh, like that he had said that out loud, I guess. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. You know, they seem like I said, to not be very smart, that they, they don't seem to have any sort of strategy. And I think they're underestimating me. So I, I, I was surprised by that. I don't know. You know, that's just terrible for his dad to throw him under the bus like that. What was the process by which you actually arrived at Haseem Rockman Jr.? Because Steven Espinosa, I think he told, I'm not sure which boxing media outlet, but he spoke and said there were a bunch of names that came up, but for whatever reason, Rockman Jr. was the right fit. So why was Rockman Jr. the, the right fit for you? Well, he has the name. He has the background. He's a professional boxer. He has the amateur career. And he's bigger than me, which creates a really tough challenge. Um, so there's just so many things here that are going to make this a fight that everyone's going to want to see. They're going to want to see me get knocked out and or they want to see if I actually can back up my shit talk and beat this guy. He did make reference. Well, let me actually ask this first. What is the actual weight this is going to be contested at, like officially? And then second, he made note of uh, the rehydration clause. Can you explain what that is in this particular contract? Yeah, so we're fighting at 200 pounds, um, and he has to weigh 200 pounds on Friday. Then Saturday morning, he can weigh as much of as up to 215 pounds, and then the night of the fight, he can weigh as much as he wants. I see. Okay, so it's not. Uh, it's just so he doesn't cut a ton of weight. Is that the idea? Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. And the New okay. York State Athletic Commission, you know, wanted to put this in place. Uh, because they were worried about him having such a crazy size advantage. They were, they almost didn't want to sanction the fight because they were concerned about his experience uh, over mine. What would you say if you had to quantify it and no one really knows, but from your vantage point, how much tougher of a boxing challenge is Rockman Jr. relative to what you had would have expected from Tommy Fury? I would say probably twice as hard, twice as hard for sure. Just because of the size, the power, and his experience. You know, he has 10 times uh, the amount of amateur fights that Tommy Fury does. You had made a reference to the commission wanting to make sure that this clause was in there. Did they have any other concerns about, I, I guess the question is, to what extent did they drive the selection process for who you ended up getting? They drove it a lot. There were certain names that they wouldn't approve, mostly MMA fighters. Um, and then... You know, we were like, all right, we need a professional boxer. And then it sort of reversed. They were like, oh, we don't know if we're going to approve Jake for this. Uh, the, you know, just like everyone, the, this is a high risk fight. This is insane. This is psychotic. No one, no boxers taking chances like this, this early on in their career. So you've done this a few times now, actually more than a few times, but I mean, like with the big stage with Showtime, I think this will be your third fight with them. Obviously the past two with, with, with uh, Woodley in, in the MMA world, so to speak. How did this compare to that? Like, it turns out to me that, like, obviously, Tyron Woodley is a very capable speaker on the microphone and as a generally a pretty smart dude. This, what, what was this like relative to that? You mean like the press conference? Yes. And like, and you faced off with him. You had a certain interaction with him relative to what you had experienced previously. What was this one like? Uh, Tyron just is like a seasoned veteran, way more professional, is a smart guy. This was like talking to uh, eighth grader who it was his first time doing anything like this. Okay. You have sparred with him. 
over the course of two different camps, is my understanding, your professional debut and then the one subsequent to that, right? So how many rounds in total would you say that you have with him? We've only sparred once, and it was five rounds. Um, but, yeah, it was, a good, it was a good sparring session. A lot of back and forth, um, a lot of good exchanges. Uh, I just believe that over the past two years, I've worked harder than him and that I will be the better fighter. I don't think he works as hard as me, and I think that's going to be the difference. Now, in fairness, I think he did. He did have one point that I thought was pretty reasonably fair, which was that, listen, sparring is not fighting. It's training. It's practice. Everyone's trying to get better. But what I would say is, did you learn anything from him from the sparring sessions? Anything you feel like you can take with you heading into August 6th? Um, there, there were some things for sure. You know, it was a long time ago, um, but there's definitely some things and some things and tactics that we're working on. Obviously, he's a southpaw. Um, but yeah, sparring is way different than the fight and I'm better at the fight. I love when the 10 ounce gloves come on. Um, and I love when it actually counts and I love when I get to be able to knock people out because there's no headgear. Who brought him in as a sparring partner to begin with? Like it's part of your team identify some like people and bring them in or do you hand pick them? Like, how does that work? Yeah. Someone from the team, whether it's Jay Leon or BJ or whoever, uh, we're always bringing in different sparring partners. And those guys are going to be in the corner again, right? Exactly. Okay. And they were, of course, there with you for the Showtime fights as well. Hey, did you watch his fight, his last sort of, well, actually, his, yes, his controversial controversial loss um, in his last fight? Yeah, we've been, we've been studying it and, and seeing, you know, all of the things that he does and sort of depicting what we're going to do and what game plan we're going to come in with. Uh, and we feel like we have a pretty good grasp of him as a fighter. I guess what I would say is when you watch that fight on tape, what do you see? Um, I see someone who will not be able to deal with my speed. I see someone who gasses out and I see someone who's not going to be able to keep up with my pace. He's going to get tired. He's going to be swinging for the fences and miss me. I'm not going to be there to get hit like Kenzie Morrison. And that's what we see. He's going to get picked apart. He's going to get outboxed in under five rounds. I'm going to knock him out. Now, obviously the, the focus is August 6th, but I have to tell you, I, I'm actually much more interested. This is, and I, and I told uh, people at Showtime this, and I've told my audience this on our podcast, I'm actually significantly more interested in this fight relative to what I would have been with Tommy Fury, because to your point, it is a, it is a much more difficult challenge. I guess the point I would like to make is if if and when you win on August 6th, it's, you have to escalate from there, right? Like it's a, I guess what I'm trying to say is, or what I would ask you is the launch point from this is to, in your mind is to wear, because this is a, to, your, to the point that you have made a legitimate professional boxer. Who's got a ton of amateur experience. He has fought at heavyweight. You have to escalate from here. That end, ends up being in like very heavily genuine boxing territory have you given consideration to what a win like this yes it would be validating but then it puts you right into the deep end of the pool does it not yeah no it does and it also gives me the ability to fight whoever i want after this you know people won't be able to say oh stop fighting mma fighters and once i beat this guy who's a heavyweight maybe that opens the door to fight mike tyson who's a heavyweight so there's a couple different game plans here and i'm ready and excited for all of them. Regardless, my competition is going to get harder and harder and harder with each fight. Well, I guess what I would ask then, though, is let's say you get a spectacular win on August 6th, right? Crowd goes nuts. Would that then mean that the door to any kind of Tommy Fury fight would be closed, or is that closed no matter what? I think it's closed because he's a flaker, and he doesn't want to actually do it, and he's wasted my time multiple times now. <laughs> Fool me once, you know, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, or whatever the fuck the saying is. Fool me three <laughs> times, we're all stupid, or whatever. Yeah. So I'm not yeah. going to fall for that again. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Now, I did see on social media something kind of interesting. Uh, you were on Ariel Hawani's MMA Hour, and he asked you about Conor McGregor, and you were like, this is a business we could do. And, and then he had a sort of a very curt response, uh, suggesting that the buys were low and everything else. Now, I saw your response video. But I guess the question I would have is, were you surprised he said that? Were you surprised he didn't at least entertain the idea of fighting you? Because Nate Diaz, 
when he posts on social media and asks for his UFC release, he specifically includes photos of you knocking out Woodley. It's a totally different attitude. Yeah, no, I mean, Connor's going to do everything he can to discredit me, uh, but it's clear he wants attention. You know, if I'm a nobody, then why are you tweeting at me? The 10 minutes after that interview comes out, it's like he had my notifications on. Do you, ex- uh, where are you on the possibility of that still happening? I think it's very possible. You know, he just is inactive. I'm the one who's fighting. I'm the one that's building my brand. I'm the one that's going uphill while his whole entire career has been going downhill. Um, so if, if and when the stars align, we can make that happen 100%. Now, getting back to Nate Diaz, I know that the conversation is obviously August 6th and Rockman Jr., but Nate Diaz, including pictures of you in his in his entreaties to the UFC to release him. That is interesting. What do you make of that? He just knows that I'm the money fight where he's going to make the most amount of money. A lot of these guys know that. Um, And so they want to be let out of their contracts so that they can get the payday. Okay. So right now, if you had to put on the gloves today, who's a tougher boxing fight? Do you believe for you, Connor or Nate? Um, I think Connor, just because of his experience in the ring with Floyd. Um, he's definitely a better striker. Nate gets hit a lot more. He certainly does. Uh, all right. Last thing I, I guess I would ask about the fight itself is when it's over on August 6th, right? The next day, let's assume you get your flowers, right? Let's assume everything goes according to plan. What is it you expect the boxing and the sports media to say about you? Like, in other words, what are the headlines on August 7th about Paul versus Rockman Jr.? I can't believe it. <laughs> oh my gosh. What did we just witness? <laughs> That's what they're going to say. You know, they're going to have to show respect. This is going to be my breakout performance. People are going to truly get to see my skill set during this fight. Also, do you think you will be the, obviously Amanda Serrano is going to pull a major crowd, Puerto Rican crowd. We saw the Katie Taylor fight, but there's going to be more of that. Do you feel like you'll get some of that rub? Will the crowd be on your side, on his side, on no one's side? What, what are you expecting there? I think the crowd's going to be on my side, you know. Amanda Serrano's fans and my fans, we're all one team. We have to represent each other. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Jake, August 6th, Showtime pay-per-view. Can't wait to see it. I appreciate your time. And uh, Jake Paul, Hasim Rockman Jr., only on Showtime Sports. Thank you, Jake. Thank you.